All right, let's bring James Freeman in from the Wall Street Journal, also a Fox News contributor. What do you make of this, James? Well, thanks, Connell. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a head scratcher. I think uh, there may be some confusion among uh, regulatory authorities. I, I think this may relate partly to uh, this question of whether it, it was the parent companies or the subsidiaries listed in the United States that were affected by the earlier Trump order. But uh, uh, obviously, uh, exciting uh, for uh, for those companies watching and their investors watching their shares rise to to learn that they're still going to be. A, available in the U.S., but uh, I, I think this larger question remains, and for these companies as well as others, is what is our relationship going to be with China under a Biden administration? The Trump regulators, both in terms of uh, accounting questions and questions, as in this case, about the use by China's military of these companies, um, uh, those questions are on the table when uh, Joe Biden takes office. To that point, the um, Chinese state media put out a story that talked about what their relationship might be like with President-elect Biden, and they seem relatively confident from the story, saying that the Biden administration would represent a new window of hope for China. Um, what do you think they're hoping for specifically? What did, what did you read into that, if anything? Yeah, I think they're hoping for the relationship with the uh, the Chinese uh, dictator Xi Jinping, for, he's hoping for the relationship he had with Vice President Joe Biden starting around 2011-2012, uh, when uh, Joe Biden, as, a, as Vice President, kind of led the Obama administration's engagement with the new Chinese leader. And uh, at that time, uh, Joe Biden saw him as a, a guy he could do business with, uh, said, uh, uh, even uh, kind of characterized it as a sort of friendship. And so, uh, I think that's got to be concerning, as we've seen in the years since then, that uh, uh, Xi Jinping is is no friend of liberty and, and really often uh, uh, working against the interests of the United States. So I, I would think, uh, while uh, we, we like to have uh, good relations with everybody around the world, I, I think uh, one would hope that this uh, relationship this time begins with a little more clear-eyed understanding of who Xi Jinping is. I don't know that Biden could come in and make many changes anyway right away. I know he said, for example, that the, the tariffs wouldn't be coming off right away. And that President Trump, and you and I, I think, have had this conversation before, has changed the dynamic and the relationship between the two countries so much that if you're Biden, you kind of have to go slowly, even if you want to change it the other way, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, I know uh, people uh, don't like uh, Donald Trump, some people, for many reasons, but he really has kind of won the intellectual argument that our China policy was misguided, that it was built for many years, in, including during the Obama-Biden administration, but long before that, on a, on a belief that economic engagement was helping to reform that country. And I, I think we have to acknowledge right. that the government there is not reformed. I, I think you saw that in the Democratic debates, a lot of criticism of Donald Trump, but basically largely backing uh, the idea that the tariffs uh, may may have a role in uh, in thwarting the bad behavior of that regime. Yeah, they've suddenly become bipartisan, without a doubt. A, um, yeah. I do, we, ha we don't have much time left, but I, there's a story that's come out in the last hour or so, and I want to pick your brain on it if we can. It's a statement about the SolarWinds hack that came out from the U.S. intelligence uh, community. And in the statement, what they said was that Russian actors are, quote, likely behind this hack and that Russia is responsible for, quote, most or all of the recent cyber compromises that we've we've seen. What would you say about that and any potential U.S. response to, you know, this giant hack, which looks like it'll get passed off to the Biden administration, the response? Yeah, the Russian government denies it. A few people believe them. Uh, this is part of a long term uh, cyber effort by the Russians. It, it's another challenge. It's a, it's a different kind of challenge. Uh, China is a has been a rising power, now the second largest economy on track to become the largest. Uh, in Russia, what you have is, is kind of a formerly uh, powerful economic nation, now uh, has an economy smaller than Texas, um, almost as large as Texas. But uh, the, the cyber uh, uh, activity for Russia is kind of a way on the cheap to, uh, to meddle and be a, be a global player. Uh, different parts of the world, uh, including in our country. So I think this is another challenge that uh, Joe Biden faces. And, and part of it is it's not just uh, cheap for uh, Russia to, 
to project power, gather intelligence, do mischief. Um, but uh, also, to this point, cyber, cyber warfare isn't really treated like other warfare, even when they do things that are, that are hostile. We don't right. really uh, necessarily respond the way we would if it was an actual physical attack. And, and we're, not, we're not looking for warfare, but, but this is another challenge that, uh, that Joe Biden will have to confront. Right, he will, and I think you're right. We we haven't um, quite got that response down pat uh, in terms of what to do once we find ourselves in these situations. James, thank you. James Freeman from the Wall Street Journal.